Okay, first I need a volunteer. I want someone to tell me when I've taken 15 minutes. Anyone? Um, woman in the pink. Thank you. You're my timer. Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank the task force for inviting me. You never know what it's like, going to be like when you travel to these conferences. Two important things out of this. I think this conference speaks to a wider international audience. There's lessons. I've learned a lot from this conference. It's not just me speaking to you. It's what you've said to me. And I think there's lessons, certainly, for my organisation in Wales. We can learn a lot from this in the South Wales Valleys. But I live in Valencia in Spain. And there's huge lessons for the various social movements which are emerging in the cities in Spain at the moment, dealing with social inequality, dealing with social issues. So you have a mission to my mind, to speak out from your experiences, from Kondonkin to Europe as a whole. The second reason to thank you is because this conference feels very energising. Very energising. It's almost like a revival meeting here. <laughs> we're, back to the, we're back to the past, aren't we? And it is, and that's good, because we've had a pretty hard time, a lot of us, over the last 10, 20 years. And I'm seeing a lot of nodding and a lot of smiling here and I think that energy may be coming back, and we need that energy. So thanks very much for inviting me. Evaluation isn't usually a very sexy topic to speak about, to be honest. <laughs> but I think it is important to the work that you're doing, important for the work that the community is doing here, that we get this evaluation right. And as the last speaker said, we need to get evaluation right. So first of all, I'm going to have a bit of a tack on KPIs, I can't resist the opportunity, but saying why I think KPIs are very, very, very bad. Secondly, because I've got those universities behind my name, I'm going to give you a couple of quotes from important people who I think have said some useful things. And thirdly, I'm going to put forward what I think are some models of evaluation which can both empower us and deliver those dreadful reports that we all have to deliver. But just this morning, when I was listening to people, I was thinking back to my own experience. 1970s, I was a young shop steward in the National Union of Public Employees in Morriston Hospital in Swansea. And they introduced what I think may have been the first KPI, time and motion studies. Uh, remember, some of you remember time and motion. Well, of course, what's my first reaction as a shop steward? I go and tell my cleaners, who are a wonderful lot, to slow down. Slow down. But Graham, they said, if we follow the book on this, we won't be able to clean the place properly. We won't be able to do the job properly if we follow it. And I said, no matter, slow down, get this time and motion absolutely right. And then it's the sort of thing, why are time and motion, why, why is working to rule so dangerous to people? Because if we follow the rule book, the official way of doing it, it's less efficient less effective, doesn't deliver outcomes. So working to rule employers don't want you working to rule either. So, I mean, there's a lot to learn from where all this lot's come from. Anyway, let's start. Well, actually, the context. This comes from the report produced for the Trust, yeah? And I, if people have got it here and not read it, I really recommend you to read it. It's an excellent report. I've read it twice. <laughs> but these are some, and I think these four, summer, these four points coming from that report sum up what's been going on. Centralisation of power and decision making, reduction of the activities of the state, individualisation of social problems, and I think that's a key, key issue going on. We don't have community issues anymore. We have a series of problem individuals and that is bad news. <laughs> Adherence to new public sector management principles. And a lot of those management principles actually have behind them the idea of not being public sector, the idea of privatisation. I've got some protest pictures as well. <laughs> We've both got the same meme there. <laughs> and what's going on is, of course, the contracting in all our countries the contracting out of public and social services, and this thing I think is really important, the co-option or, or coercion of the voluntary and community sectors, i.e. we have to take their money, to take their money we have to fulfil what they say we've got to do, but most of all we then have to shut up 
yeah? And the voluntary sector, which had a long history in the community development sector of protest, of empowering communities, was co-opted and coerced into becoming a service provider subject to rules, and one of the key rules was you don't lead protest. Yeah? And that's what's happened. And of course, what also has happened is the closing down of spaces for communities and community-based services to input in the decision-making process. So it becomes a top-down model, not a bottom-up model. And I don't know where I got this report. This may be from your report. The extreme levels of monitoring reporting requirements and effectiveness and value for money evaluations. Value for money evaluations, not quality of service evaluations, but value for money. And extreme levels of reporting to the point, I was listening to a couple of people outside having a cigarette this morning, and people were talking about the conflict between being on the ground and being in the office doing the reports. And we all live in that conflict, yeah? So, <laughs> here's actually this quote here. I quoted it quite long because I think it's from the King's Fund, which is a not particularly radical medical charity tied into some of the poshest London universities, hence the name King's Fund. But what they said is, firstly, you game them. And of course, when I was telling the cleaners to go slow, without knowing it, in the 70s, I was already gaming these reports. And we all know what I'm talking about when we're doing gaming. You put down more days for some things to give you, to give you the money to do the work properly in the things you're not allowed to report. We're gaming it. We're being led into it. We're being forced to game it. Misreporting of data to avoid penalties and sanctions. Yeah, we know this one. Concerns, they said, have been raised that areas of care not covered by targets will not receive sufficient attention, i.e., these targets are coming above if you're not on the action line. And I'm working for a project for the UK government at the moment. I don't suppose I can quite name names on this. But anyway, for the Department of Education in the UK, right? And I've got this series of KPIs. And the lawyers of the university who are coordinating the project have told me not to do anything which doesn't have an action line in the funding attached to it because we'll not be covered for insurance. So just don't do anything. Leave things that need doing, that we know we need doing, and we're willing to do because we're not covered by insurance because of the contract conditions. So you'll get a culture of compliance and risk aversion. Risk aversion, don't do anything risky. That's the whole thing that happens. It inhibits no ambition. At the worst, performance management has the effect of disempowering those working and creating overall reliance on central guidance. And this, I said, does not come from a radical community development association. It comes from a very posh medical charity. So I think this is the questions we've got to ask now. And in your context, you've got to ask. But I think we've all got to ask. Fundamentally, if we're talking about evaluation, see that word value is in there? Evaluation. We're talking about value. What do we value and who do we value? What are we looking for in evaluation? What's important to us? What's important to you? What's important for your communities? And who are the people we're talking about? Because of that risk of exclusion, who are those people who should be involved in that evaluation? Well, this you all know. I don't know why I put a slide in about community development, because it's very obvious in the course of this conference, you all know the key ideas behind the community development, empowerment, participation, inclusion, self-determination, and partnership, yeah? So that might be a clue to what do we value and who do we value. We actually have a big clue in our own principles of community development. That's our starting point for creating our own evaluation framework, right? But this quote, I think, is really important. I don't normally put long quotes on slides, but this one is. Because what Paola Freire, who's a well-known pedagogist, radical pedagogy, what he said is the system of dominant social relations creates a culture of silence that instills a negative silenced and suppressed self-image into the oppressed. And with the oppressed here, I'd include both communities, people in communities, but also community workers. We are self-silent ourselves because that is the culture of dominant social relations which this 
form of contracting has instilled. In fact, that's what contracting is all about. It's a social relationship thing, and it instills that culture of silence, which can cause dominated individuals to lose the means to which to critically respond to the culture that's forced on them by a dominant culture. And I think that's what's happened. We've lost the abilities to respond in the ways we used to know because we've had to become silent for that, for, in that culture. And this I just found, actually, on a blog. Unfortunately, the site, it's not the name off of the person who's written it, but if we, it's on the, on the original sides anyway. And the research methods we used, he was talking about actually research in education, but I think this is, uh, this is important for wider groups. How do we assign people into groups? Who are those groups? Why do we form those groups? Because there's power structures in the way we divide people into groups to study. And there's power structures in our choice of variables. Why do we look at words like intelligence, skills? Are they an important words? Are we really looking at those variables? And then, of course, the all other things being equal, which is the cop out of all time. Once we've selected our variables and we've divided people into groups for study or for evaluation, we say all other things being equal and ignore what are probably the most important variables. Just as social class is never talked about in education, the most important variable in achievement in education is social class, and next to never is social class taken as important variable. That's just when all other things being equal. What's the conditions we use to test our hypothesis? Are we looking for success? How do we measure success? How do we measure success? And the correspondence between sample and population. And those are all issues I think we should be taking in. Now this slide crept in because I was doing some work on spaces and places and got totally preoccupied in every presentation I've done for the last three months. I've banged this slide in. But I think it's quite important because I think a lot of the time we set up spaces for people. And the idea, which actually comes from computer-supported learning, is those spaces are moulded or shaped. The German word is gestaltung, which doesn't translate well. It can either be shaping or development. Uh, those are, are shaped by the people who use those spaces. And in the act of shaping them, they become places. And that's what I think we are aiming at through community development, is to turn spaces, opportunities, into places which are owned by the users. Not owned by us, not owned by the government, but owned by the people. So I think it's a very powerful idea, and I shall write some stuff about it in the future. And I think another encouraging thing for us is the movement towards Creative Commons license, but towards open data and open evaluation. I think evaluation should not be a report which is published somewhere on a government website. Evaluation should be an open, not only product, but an open process which involves everybody, all those social actors who are part of the community. And that one is partly there because I like it. I love that slide. Warning, this body is networked. It feels quite dangerous, doesn't it? But also because I'm going to suggest towards the end of my presentation that we can use technology ourselves. I don't want to leave it to the Facebooks of the world to be collecting data on us and misusing that data. Thank you, I've got my five-minute warning. Uh, I want us to be using technology ourselves for empowerment. Okay, there are models. I'm not going to go into any depth of these models because I've only got five minutes left in any way. These models need a bit more thinking, but I'm suggesting there are different models of evaluation, and we need to think about this and adopt models of evaluation which empower us and empower our communities. That one's input, translation, output, but basically, what are we looking for? How do we make a judgment? Because evaluation is a process of judgment, and how do we represent it? You know, I think I went the wrong way. Okay, and there are different approaches to evaluation. All of these are mainstream approaches, but some approaches to evaluation and some models will be nearer what we want than others, and some more models. Ooh, Jesus, more models there. And I'd say we're looking 
somewhere around cognitive processes and social processes. Obviously, that's got learning in it, but it translates perfectly well because evaluation is about learning. It's about us learning to improve the work we do, not just producing a report to get the funding off. And another model, the CIPP model, a very common model. The important thing here is you see this model has got context in it. And context is all too often left out of evaluation. And we have to include the context in which we are working as part of that evaluation. The Nexus model, which Brian will be very familiar with, which actually is being used in Ireland, I know, and there is software supporting this model, yeah? looking at what were the issues, what's the project trying to do and how, what's been the results and the impact of the project. Yeah? Now what I'm saying to you is we can't throw away the demands for the funding overnight yeah? and the demand for their reports. But what we can do is form ways, use models for evaluation and ways of collecting data which both hopefully produce a lot of stuff which goes into the report, so you're not having to do it twice, but a stuff for us and the communities we work with to learn from. That's what we want to do. That's got to be our aim. We can't get rid of this reporting requirement overnight, but we can do it in a way which we produce useful things. Logical framework is commonly used by aid organisations. I think as a model it's quite useful, but I have some doubts as to whether anyone actually really looks at the assumptions in it properly, and I think it can become a linear model in the way it's used. Now, last bit, e-technologies. E-technologies are going to revolutionise the way we think about and practice evaluation and are beginning to revolutionise it. E-valuation, <laughs> I like that. Uh, First of all, technologies give us a greater range of data gathering tools. We can produce a small app, which we can give away for free, which means we can involve anybody with a mobile phone in the process of collecting data. We don't have to go out and do extensive interviews or small samples. We can actually get people contributing to the evaluation through their own data gathering tools, their phones which they have. And through that process we can, we can involve far more people than have traditionally been involved. Let's go beyond the experts. Let's go beyond the experts and involve more people. Thirdly, stakeholders can create and publish evaluation content themselves. We can use uh, content management software to let people publish directly their own comments and their own ideas on how services and how campaigns are being organised directly themselves. We don't have to stop them. We can say, you are part of the process. And lastly, we can have repurposed or digital evaluation products as open content, open content, dealing with multiple realities, using multimedia. I really, really love that video this morning. I think that's an evaluation product. That video is an evaluation product coming out of the Kondonkin community. And in three minutes, it says more <laughs> than many 50-page reports have ever said, yeah? That's an evaluation product. Evaluation products don't have to be boring, long reports with lots of figures. We want evaluation products to be used by the community itself. And here's another, oh yeah, a greater range of evaluation products. And finally, we can produce things like this. This is just a poster. We can produce a poster. I produced an evaluation product as a cartoon using some wonderful software called Cartoon Life. I tell you, it's a 12-page cartoon as a result of an evaluation I undertook, and I had more people read that than ever read anything else that I'd produced before. Uh, the European Commission ummed and ahed a bit about it when I submitted it to them. I said, but look, everyone's read it. OK, yeah, that's all right. So we can do things, right? That's one thing coming out of this conference. We can do things. Evaluation should still form a part of it. But I don't want you to go away thinking, oh, my God, we've got to evaluate this. This is another chore. 
I want evaluation to be fun. I want evaluation to be useful. I want it to be participative. I want to be able to learn lessons from it. And yes, we should be accountable. And yes, I want value for money. But let's do it our way. Thank you very much. Thanks, Graeme. So just while we're getting the speakers ready that spoke today up onto the panel, I would just ask everyone that you might just spend some time talking to the person beside you. Um, any observations or reflections on the speakers this morning, any of the content that was delivered. So just let's give us five minutes to get everything organised. We'll just have them conversations because we're hoping you're going to participate now in our panel discussions. And anyone who has any questions,